Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel, where the purpose here is to inspire your spirit. Today, I have an interesting conversation that will be uh, coming in. I'm really not sure what to expect. I Let me tell you a little bit of background. So this morning, I was getting ready. I knew I would be channeling today. I don't have sessions today, so I'm, it's a channeling day for me. I'm really excited to do that. And I wasn't sure who really was coming forward. I could feel some different energies around that I could invite in for conversation, but this particular energy stands out. And I'm not super thrilled about the vibration because it can be really difficult for me personally as a sensitive person to channel people who died really young or who died tragically. And this is one of those cases. So my goal is not to make you sad today, but to inspire your spirit to get some kind of a context or understanding when situations like this happen and learn from it for ourselves. And he really wants to talk. In fact, he wanted to do a transformative channel. If you've seen me do that, it's a trans, T-R-A-N-S channel. I do it most often with um, the famous musician Prince. And yet I only do it with very trusted um, energies and this particular energy feels really uh, because of the transition and because of the the circumstances around um, this particular individual's transition I I just I'm not going to do that I'm like no 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 he really wants to and I'm like no maybe at some other point he's respectful but he was pushy and so it, it's a young man um, his name is River Phoenix he's an actor of my generation a little bit older I think um, not much though, and I, and <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about what I know about him, and I'll tell you how his energy influenced me this morning. So I know that he's an actor. I know that he was in some really famous, iconic movies. I think he was in Stand By Me. I'm not sure. At this point, when I'm recording this video, I do not do pre-work or research prior to my channels. I want to go in pure and kind of discover and explore with you. If you're a fan, go ahead and make your comments in the, the below this video, share, ask questions, just really engage, support the process. But this is a natural process, so I haven't looked anything up. But I do, I remember his name, and what I know about him is that I know that he died of an overdose. I know he died outside the famous Viper Room, and I know it was really tragic because he was a great he had a lot of potential as an actor. And again, I'm going to say, I think he was in Stand By Me, but he can, he can talk about that a little more. His energy is pretty mellow vibe. He's got a really cool vibe, in fact. So as I was preparing for this channel, as I do with other channels, I feel the vibration of the person that I'm going to connect with and I dress appropriately if I can. Um, I don't have a vast wardrobe, but I have some different things that I can wear if I need to. And I really felt like I needed to wear a jean jacket. I could not find my jean jacket. I looked for it like three different times. I could not find it. But he, I don't know if he has like an iconic picture where he wore a jean jacket or if a jean jacket was kind of a thing for him or if it was really cool at that time. This is like, you know, the 90s, uh, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, it feels like. Energy like 1988 to 1996 or maybe 97. 1988 to 1997 for some reason he I see that timeline I don't know what that means 1988 to 1987 no 1988 to 1997 thanks all right trying to keep it straight a little tricky as the energy is coming in and then I felt like so I needed to wear black I'm going to have my purple on underneath because the purple vibration really feels good to me today and I was kind of thinking I was going to channel somebody else but this energy just kept showing up so I'm going to honor him with the space and the platform to speak and then I had to wear my yoga bracelet um, it's got a Celtic knot on it can you see that it's got all these great beads but it's it's a bracelet that I like to wear like when I exercise or yoga and it kind of feels like strong I don't wear it a lot but this is something that came forward and then also, um, so then a black shirt, like a dress shirt, like I needed to, if I wasn't going to wear the jean jacket, I couldn't just wear a tank top or something. I had to wear something like nicer, you know, like a black shirt kind of thing. I'm like, okay. All right. And interestingly, I kept tucking my hair. Now, you know, if you watch my videos, I have like long hair on one side and short hair on the other. 
and it's just been my style for quite a while now but I had to tuck it tuck it and I understand I remember I think I remember River Phoenix kind of had longer hair too so like blonde sandy blonde I think again I have not looked at a picture of him I don't know right now and then there was something around the neck like a, a some kind of necklace I had to wear some kind of necklace more masculine than feminine something that felt very spiritual he feels spiritual to me and I don't know if in his human life he was religious I don't know that yet um, but it feels it feels like he really has a connection to the universe and so this particular symbol that I have is like the universal symbol of universe or God or source and so and I love it I like it I don't wear it a lot though I usually keep it in my rock box my rock bin I have a rock bowl kind of in my kitchen I have a couple actually I usually keep it in there just as a symbol and I'll pull it out when I'm doing something if I need to but um so that felt right so that's why I was a little worried I'm like dude I'm not trans channeling you because I'm wearing some stuff like you I'm not trans channeling you it's not gonna happen all right so River would you like to come in he laughs at me he kind of smiles at me he's flirty He's got a nice flirty energy, but a young man, good looking. Um, almost like the brat pack of the early 90s or something. I don't know if that's even a term that is used or was used then or something. Um, a little bit, he says, I'm a little bit younger than that. <laughs> I'm like, I know you are. <laughs> I know. Uh, God, he seems like he's in his 20s, 24, 25, 25, 26, 27, 25, 26, 27, 25. 26, 25, 26. I think he may have crossed when he was in his mid to late 20s, not super old at all. Not 30, didn't get to 30, didn't get to 29, didn't get to 28. It feels like 27, 26, 25, 26. Um, he says age is just a number, <laughs> right? Especially when you're and don't have a body. He says, especially when you don't have a body. He's very, he's entertaining. And I'm going to say right away, and I'm going to share this because he, otherwise I know he, and I know he knows it. I don't want to be rude. We're just going to say it like it is. I totally confuse River Phoenix with Leonardo DiCaprio. And we know that Leo is totally alive and also a good looking man. And in case he watches my videos, you know, I just have to, oh. <laughs> really. Come on, you guys. And a philanthropist? Oh. River Phoenix is like, really? She's gushing about Leo. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so I'm just going to say that. Oh, so River, as soon as you come in, you're pleasant to talk to. Um, I feel an energy of hesitation a bit. He says that's coming from you. Okay, so let me see if I can clear my heart soften my solar plexus my spirit chakra so i can really uh is that better that's better he says no that's better that's better okay all right i feel like you were in music did you sing he said yes he said not many people know that about me not many people remember me for that they just pretty much remember me for how i died right let's talk about that because Part of the purpose of this channel, of Above Life channel, is to help the people who watch understand more about life through the reflection of the afterlife. So when afterlife spirit like you come in to speak and reflect upon your life, it really is beneficial, especially um, when it's hard to understand. Like, why did this happen? Why? You were so young. And he said, uh, at my own hands says at my own hands he says addiction is a difficult thing and you've talked about that before with the people that you have connected through and you know and people who are watching the video will also understand that addiction is a difficult thing it's a monster it's a monster in the closet and you feel like a little kid that has a hard time fighting that scary monster and I feel like the word demons um, he said, I was trying to escape some of my personal pains, things I didn't share with other people. And that's really sad because when you're addicted, when you're 
your behavior is out of control and you're making choices you wouldn't typically make in the light of day. You are so separate, he says, so separate from reality and everything. It feels like a movie. It feels like you'll just, you, you do a death scene and you come back in. And interestingly, some of my characters in movies, he said, I was actually cast in a film that was upcoming and I would have had great opportunity. And he's talking about really good directors, like really, like he was really impressed. It seems like he was really impressed with cinematography and like be, being behind the camera, um, like producing, directing. So that would have been something that you would have been on the mark for that you would have really enjoyed or wanting to do. He says, absolutely. But he says, there's no telling what could have happened, what might have been. I know that's hard for people, he says, to, to digest, to understand. I know it's hard for people to understand that. And uh, there's no one to blame but myself. It's no fault but my own. It, it was tragic. It feels tragic. And he says he's, he's expressing remorse for his family. I feel like you had a sister at least one brother, maybe two, two brothers, a brother, a sister and two brothers. I feel like you had, uh, I know, I think I might know, actually, I can't remember with my brain. I might know that you have an entertaining family or your family is from entertainment. I think, does that feel right? That feels right to me. He says, my sister, I was close with my sister. She took it the hardest. And my dad. Um, but, you know, in many cases, addictions, are passed down. They're learned behaviors, they're learned patterns of how to cope and deal with life, deal with the stress of life. So, um, hmm. this is a tricky space to enter into. Um, because of the current events around Hollywood and allegations of not only um, abuse or mistreatment of women, but of young stars as well, it's, it's come out in the open. Um, I'm not sh I don't know why this would even come into the conversation unless you want to speak about it. Do you wish to speak about it? And there's kind of like this pause and there's like this gray energy. For many child actors, there is neglect around the fact that, that we are children, that they are children and they need to be nurtured and cared for and treated like children and you lose that. There's no, there's a complete absence of youth and I never really had that. I never, you know, you can't just go and play on the playground because something could happen, you could cut your face and then you can't, you know, be in a, a commercial or a movie or go on a casting call. And it's just not anything like a normal or anything even remotely like a life that you, that everyone takes for granted. I think a lot of people take for granted their upbringing, their, the way that they were raised. And it's, it's funny that the only experience as a child is in a movie playing on a set, swing set in a movie. I keep seeing Stand By Me. He must have been in Stand By Me. I keep seeing it, literally the scene walking down the railroad tracks. That's what I see. I don't know for sure if that's you or if that's symbolism or metaphor for you or if you were up for that role and you didn't get it. I don't know. I feel like you either were in that movie or there's symbolism in the movie. I feel like you were friends with some of those guys. We, we sort of grew up in Hollywood together. You know, you do the circuits and he talks about parties in Hollywood. It's easy to get out of control if you don't know what you're doing. He says, uh, you can be real that you're real vulnerable. Um, and there are definitely people that will take advantage of you. And that happened many times, is what he's saying. That happened many times. I feel like he's referring, oh boy, I really don't wanna get it. This is why I didn't wanna do this video. I don't wanna get into politic, political stuff about Hollywood. I don't want, the video is to be about the intent, the, you know, the darkness necessarily, but I guess the darkness, he said right away, he stopped me. He said, 
but the darkness is part of the light. It's the balance that, that everyone seeks. You have to be willing to go to the dark places and accept that so that then you can change it. You can't change it if you don't see it, if you just ignore it. He said, that's what's happening in your Hollywood right now. He says, you can't, you can't just ignore it anymore. So Car <clears throat> Corey Haim, who also, who also died tragically, um, I think, I believe he committed suicide. Um, was one of those child actors. Were you friends? Yes. And in the afterlife, I can see Corey Haim. I can see Corey Haim. He's coming right in. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. He doesn't say anything. He just nods his head and just waves a little bit. He's being very polite, not coming into the River Phoenix channel, but acknowledging Corey Haim. I am definitely willing to talk to you if need be. Yes. And I, I'm not, I don't want to do exposés or anything like that, but, and dig up drama, but... I want to. I also want to honor you, River, for um, sharing the reality. There is darkness in Hollywood. It's not all glitz and glamour. He said. He says there's definitely a price to be paid, and childhood should not be that price. People should not take advantage of you. People should not hurt you. You should not be left vulnerable. There needs to be more oversight in Hollywood of child actors and actresses, child stars, entertainers that are not just their immediate family because their parents cannot protect them. They have other things going on. They have other things to do. And in, quite frankly, in some cases, parents are oblivious. They turn a blind eye. They don't pay attention because they don't want to believe it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to believe it. Any victim of abuse, especially child sexual abuse, feels like it's their fault. And it's not your fault, is what River's saying. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. If you've been abused, if you are a child, if you're an adult that was abused as a child, it's not your fault. It is not your fault. And that child inside of you is perfect and whole. And I know this. I know this. When I left the earth and he literally shows me like a scene of a movie like he's um i know that he died right out i know that you died right outside the viper room in hollywood very famous club i know that you overdosed and everybody watched you basically watched you die so i feel a heart heart issue like heart attack or something right unresponsive he says that's he said that's right that's right he said it, <laughs> he said it wasn't pretty he said there's pictures of me of my body of my dead body can you believe that? Talk about um, tragic. That's what sells. Death sells. I mean, isn't that tragic? It's such an irony of humanity, isn't it? That death sells. And there's such a fear of death. Everybody's so afraid of it, he says. And then he shows me so that it's black, the wrapper room, black awning, black black like it looks like the sidewalk is black I don't know if it is but it looks like it's black and he's looking up and he literally almost like the movie ghost Do you guys remember the movie ghost he shows me like he comes out of his body but it's like really it's like really like ah oh. comes out of his body and there's like a street light or a light shining down it might be coming from the building or coming from a street light it's coming down at an angle on him and on his face and he's kind of off to the side like this his head's like tilted to the side and somebody has him in his lap their lap somebody some woman has her I think it's a woman. There's a woman and two men that are near and younger people and like holding his head and his head's kind of sideways a little bit and just cradling his head and, and just rubbing, you know, rubbing his, his face and moving his hair, tucking his hair back. Like maybe that's why I'm doing this. I don't know. And he literally like stands up, kind of straightens himself up, you know, straightens himself up, turns and where that light is glowing from the um, the whatever, the street light or whatever it is, and there's like a stairway, and it's a black stairway, and there's a light at the top, and it's like old Hollywood walking up the stairs. You know old Hollywood movies like where they're like mu musicals, and they're dancing up the stairs? It's like that, but it's real mysterious and kind of sexy, and he's walking up the stairs, and he turns, and there's like this gold kind of railing, this like brass, not shiny gold, but brass railing. He turns, and he looks like old Hollywood, and he's like, I'll see you again. That's what he says. He turns, and he goes, I'll see you again to the people below. 
He turns and walks up and he says, I left right away. He's like, I'm like, hey, okay. And like, this is, he said, it's just like, I was just like I was acting in a movie and I left my body and I went up, you know, cut. And then all of a sudden I'm in this place, this energy space that he says, I would describe as, I feel it as energy. He says, I describe as a big white room, like Willy Wonka. All his references are movie references. Great. He's like, Gene Wilder is a great actor. I'm like, really? Gene Wilder, yeah, Willy Wonka. You know Willy Wonka, right? I'm like, yeah, I know Willy Wonka, okay. He says, you know that white room, the scene where there's a big white room? That's what it was like. But he says it wasn't sterile or scary or creepy. He said, but you know what's weird? He said, I went back and I I saw my body. It was like in the morgue. And, you know, like a CSI kind of thing. Like your your, your time would be like a CSI or something, you know, looking at the body and being like, what the heck, you know? or uh, NCIS or something like that. He's like, I see the initials, but I can't, it's not the right, it's not the right connection. I'm not making that connection, but he's like, I'm looking at the body like, okay. So, huh, so that's what happens. Huh, interesting, kind of a thing. And I'm like, all right, Uh, all right. So I guess this is it then, you know, (laughs) kind of thing like, all right, I guess we're done here. We're done filming. And he says, then after that, there's just like this, there's like no other connections to my human life. Although I did see my funeral, I did look at my funeral and I feel like it was like this beautiful day. I feel like there's these rolling hills. Um, I'm actually recording this on Wednesday, June 6th, 2018. And I feel like you've been gone for a while, like 20 years, is that true? Just about, he says just about. Uh, And about, he says about. And, but I feel like there's military somewhere nearby, like military part of the cemetery or some kind of military connection vibe. I don't know, did you have a grandfather that was in the service? Maybe, Um, there's some kind of military thing. I don't know if it's because I'm in the cemetery and the cemetery is known for being a military cemetery or if it's I'm in the cemetery and I can see the military stuff or if it's near a military base or something military or it could be military road, I don't know. There's a military connection. Love to look this up after. Are you buried in California? Yes. And something he says Irvine. I don't know what Irvine is. I know it's a place, I think it's a place in California. I think it's Irvine. I think it is, it sounds familiar. I don't know if he's talking about his burial place, his death place, or where he lived. Um, He says, I have family there. I have family there. It's weird, though, because I almost feel like, I feel like he may have been, this is super personal. I've never talked to a spirit about this. I never say never. Something new happens all the time. I feel like he was cremated, and he may be more than one place. Because it's weird, because I feel like there may have been a funeral someplace or a memorial someplace, like in California, and then he's someplace else his final resting place someplace else. That's kind of how I might feel. So there's some kind of memorial one place and he's buried another place. That's what I feel. So there's two places, there's two resting places. And he laughs, he's like, isn't that funny? Like there's only peace when you die. He says, no, see, that's the problem. That's the fault of humanity. He said, that's the problem with people. You don't recognize that you already have peace because peace is part of your soul and your soul is is ever after, it's eternal. And that is something that people need to recognize and acknowledge about their life. And so with that, I'm going to, wow, say, wow, there is a whole host. I feel like you're a fountain of information. I feel like you are a, I feel like you're a fountain of wisdom. I feel like you're a fountain of wisdom, River. I feel like you're quiet, but you know, like there's a a confidence about you. And I feel like it's interesting because I don't feel you edgy. Like I feel like as a person you were edgy, like the way I dressed and everything, I felt that kind of edginess and I didn't feel real good vibes around your your transition. And and I, and I, maybe it's because of the abuse energy that you spoke of, the, the, specifically the child sexual abuse energy that you spoke about and I, maybe that's why that could be because I have four children of my own, love them very, very much. And I can't even imagine trying to keep them safe and protected in an environment like you were describing like Hollywood. And so, and I want to say thank you to Corey Haim who just kind of popped in as well. All right. (sighs) Wonderful information. He says, I appreciate you doing this. 
I know, I know it wasn't your favorite thing. I know it wasn't what you planned. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't, but that's okay. That's what happens, right? That's what happens. We just got to show up and uh, film, right? <laughs> on with the movie, on with the show. This is Bridget. Remember at Above Life Channel, the goal here is to inspire your spirit, to really fill you with hope. And remember, it's your life, so live it. Thanks for being here. Be sure to like, comment below if you choose to, and subscribe. Make sure you click that red bell on YouTube so that you can subscribe so you never miss a weekly channel. Thanks for being here.